اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سیدنا و نبینا و طبیب نفوسنا و حبیب قلوبنا ابل قاسم محمد صلی اللہ علیہ و آلہ و سلم لا سیم و بقیت اللہ روحی و ارواح العالمین لمقدمه الفداء Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before I say the alhamdulillah that I usually say, let me prepare you why I want to say this. Inshallah, all of us, we say it from the bottom of our heart. Uh, there is a wise man in the Quran whose name is Luqman. A surah in the Quran, chapter 31 of the Quran is named after him, known as Luqman al-Hakim, Luqman the wise. The Almighty God in the same surah, chapter 31, tell us, tells us why is it that this man was called a wise man? What was special about him? What was the wisdom that he enjoyed? The Almighty God says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُغْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ We surely granted Luqman wisdom. Then it seems like someone immediately says, God, what was the wisdom that you gave him? The Almighty God says, Anishkur lillah, to be grateful to Allah. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us this lesson. If you want to see how wise you are, see how grateful you are to individuals who have done favor to you, to the Almighty God who had favored you above all. So uh, with this introduction, I want to say, brothers and sisters, let us all say together, Alhamdulillah alladhi هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله. Wholeheartedly, all praise belong to God. We are so thankful and grateful to God. The month of Ramadan is declining. Remember that before the month starts, because of the pandemic, some were panicking, wondering that would we be able to fast during this month of Ramadan? How are we going to fast? By the grace of God, by and large, and I'm in touch with so many various communities around the world uh, without any, any issues, alhamdulillah, absolute majority of uh, members of the community have been able to fast, meet their obligations, enjoy the spirituality of these holy months, the vigils during the night times of the months of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, inshallah, we met the Laylatul Qad as well and reap the rewards of it. So from the bottom of my heart, we are so grateful to God and inshallah we endeavor to make the best of the remaining days and the months of Ramadan. Because this session tonight is the last session for the series that remember that from the beginning of the months of Sha'ban for the last two months I've been with you. It is also based on the ayah that I quoted in the Quran. It is also my duty to express my gratitude and thanks to all those who've been able, enabled and provided this facility for us. To, to be able to communicate. First and foremost, the volunteer, the dedicated volunteer team at Imam Hussein Islamic Center, really from the bottom of my heart, Jazahumullah Khairah, full credit goes to them. I witnessed that almost every day or most of the days of the months of Ramadan, they used to come before sunset, before Maghrib, preparing everything, all set up, uh, all the equipments, and sometimes, especially the nights of God, they stay all the way till morning. This is a full dedication and voluntarily, without any physical expectation or anything for the sake of God, may the Almighty God accept, accept it from them and bless them. Also, it is my, my duty to definitely thank Sister Rebecca. I'm learning, if I said correctly, uh, Rebecca, I am thankful to you and also to the deaf community. If I continue a little bit further, I think I'm learning the sign language as well. Really, she has done a fantastic job. Many, many members of the community have been so much impressed with her dedication, especially during the nights of Qad. MashaAllah, she stayed with us until very late hours of interpreting. Really, I, I was watching and I felt that my hands are getting numb. I don't know how she was doing it. God bless you, Sister Rebecca. May God uh, accept it and bless all of us. Alhamdulillah for the opportunity. The deaf community, inshallah, they appreciated it. And we are so grateful that with the assistance of Auslan Interpretation, we have included uh, 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 our 
brothers and sisters who could not hear and inshallah they, they join the programs as well and they remember us to, to pray for us. Now because we are approaching the end of the month of Ramadan, I need to bring to your kind attention uh, an action, a worshipping action that is so significant in Islam and is considered endorsement of fasting. Endorsement of many of worshipping acts, but particularly now because we are in the month of Ramadan, is in endorsement of fasting. My fasting of the month of Ramadan will not be accepted unless it is endorsed with this action. Which one is this? This is a twin sister to Salat. This is a twin sister to so. This is a twin sister to Hajj. What I'm trying to say is that in the Quran, when you read the whole Quran, you see that wherever the Almighty God talks about a, a worshipping act, such as Salat, for example, our daily prayers, couples it with Zakat. And I will, that's what I want to explain and talk about. The same for fasting. See, it seems that praying is an individual communication with God, purely a worshipping act. Fasting, it seems also purely a worshipping act of like uh, abstinence from certain things, living like a hermit for one month, kind of. But Islam is not just a, a lifestyle of hermits living in a cave away from the community and the society. Islam is the full package for the best of this world and the next. And because by very nature we are sociable being, we are gregarious uh, being, we have fellow humans to care about and share with that's why in every worshiping act you see that islam is also recommending social aspect to it as well and is introducing social aspects even take the example of daily prayers as i said salat seems to be a very individual uh, communication relationship with god yet islam recommends to do it congregationally together Hence, we get together, inshallah, as soon as this pandemic uh, is over again, back to normal, we get together for Friday prayers and daily prayers and the like, to do it all together, because it matters that we are communicating, we are social being. Now, this is not just for the sake of being together. Fasting, Islam also says that your fasting has social benefits. In the beginning of Ramadan, I mentioned that. One of the reasons for not having the lunch is that we skip our lunch so that the money that I would spend for my lunch, I give it to the poor and needy people, to the disadvantaged people. Because Islam endeavors to reduce the gap between the poor, the tycoons, and the, and the poor. Doesn't want to uh, divide the community into two uh, economic class distinct from each other. Wants to bridge the gap. And one of the ways to bridge the gap is this fiscal uh, uh, contribution that we call it donation, charity, zakat. That's why you see that everywhere in the Quran, Quran speaks about salat, couples it with zakat. Now, follow me to tell you what is zakat. You know that most, most of these terminologies, religious terminologies, are borrowed out of religious context and used in a religious context. What is zakat in Arabic? Literally, zakat, that is the meaning of it. This is not a religious meaning, out of religious context, and then I'll bring it to you to the religious uh, meaning. Zakat literally is this, when you go to your backyard, inshallah, you have sometimes, you have a green finger, and you want to do some good job, trimming the trees, the extra trees, you want your, the, your garden to look nice, neat, and also help the tree to grow better, you are trimming the, the, some branches and leaves of, of, of the trees. This action of trimming a tree in Arabic is called zakat. Now, Islam has borrowed this term, brought it to a religious context, to say to us that when I'm telling, God says, when I'm telling you to give a portion of, a part of your income as a charity donation, it's just like you're trimming your wealth. You let your wealth cherish in so much as when you trim the tree, your little son is, is watching, Dad, why are you cutting the tree? He doesn't know that this cutting the extra branches is very beneficial, it's good for the tree, for the growth of the tree. 
Likewise, Quran wants to pass this message to us. When you are cutting, when you are giving portion of your wealth as charity, in fact, this is cherishing your, your uh, wealth. Don't think that you are losing one. More important than that, it also helps my soul grow as well. Because by being charitable, I become more selfish. Selfishness requires that I keep everything to myself. Me, myself, and I. Being caught in the triangle of me, myself, and I. Is, isn't it? Selfish people are only thinking about themselves. But Islam wants to say, no, you try to be selfless. And to be selfless, it means that you share. It's my money, supposedly. It's my income. It's my pay and sleep. By voluntary, I choose to give it to someone who is in need of it. Not all of it, all part of it. This is called zakat. So the reason that we, zakat is in Islam, it means, so general broad term is charity, donation. But now you know why Islam refers in Arabic to charity as zakat. To help us spiritually grow and also will let our wealth grow as well. Now, by the end of the month of Ramadan, that inshallah in, in Australia, we are expecting it to be Sunday, the last day of the month of Ramadan, 24th of May. Next Sunday, inshallah, is going to be the next day of the month of Ramadan, according to the mainstream fatwa. So by the time that the sun of next Sunday, 24th of May sets, that marks the end of the month of Ramadan for us. All right. And at that time, from that time, we have a fiscal obligation as part of our fasting, as the endorsement of our fasting to give a zakat charity that is called zakat al fitr meaning that I break my fast with this charity. The calculation is the following, following, that I need to calculate people that I'm responsible for their maintenance, like in my example, myself, my wife, and my daughter. For every person, I need to calculate the value of three kilos of wheat, flour, or uh, barley, flour, rice, date, any of such uh, grains or items and uh, like check with the with the supermarkets and see what's the average price three the, the value of uh, three kilos of any of this per head like a family of three they need to make it three times three non the value of nine kilo like what what we have calculated average until late last night with some of the brothers we were checking the prices this morning we're checking the prices at different supermarkets roughly about eight nine dollars if you want to round it make it ten bucks it's not difficult ten bucks per person you give it for for charity what should i spend it for quran says that islam says that give it to the poor muslims if you know anyone among your friends and and relatives families families get the first priority if you know someone in your family who is poor, the definition of poor is the one that their annual income is less than their annual expenses that are short of certain amount of money. Such people are categorically poor and you are expected to give them that. If you don't know anyone, either now that it's not possible, unfortunately, or inshallah will be better, but if you cannot hand it over to the center, you can deposit it to the charity account of Imam Hussein Islamic Center. Just make sure that you, in the description you write it, what is this for? Mention that this is Zakat al for example. And also, if you are a Sayyid, please specify that you are Sayyid. Because as you know, the, the charity of the Sayyid goes only to the Sayyid. Otherwise, if you don't mention, we take it that it is for the, uh, like for the normal uh, people. So remember that this obligation of uh, zakat al-fitr, even if someone could not fast because of illness, ladies because of pregnancy or, or anything that in this month they were excused to fast, still zakat al-fitr is oblig obligatory and we have to give the zakat al-fitr inshallah and I don't need to go to the details of it. The third issue that I want to bring to your attention and inshallah spend the rest of my time on it is that brothers and sisters, Ramadan is almost finishing the holy months of Ramadan. We are going to bid farewell to it next Sunday, as I said, but that does not mean that Ramadan, we should just 
finish with it and go back to our normal routine as it was in the past. Maintenance is always more important in everything. As a marriage celebrant, when I, after I solemnize the marriage, I tell the couples uh, that, look, getting married, as you can see, wasn't difficult. Couple of months getting to know each other, you came to a marriage celebrant, exchanged the vow, you got married, you became husband and wife. Now, to maintain this relationship for the rest of your life, this is a life challenge, isn't it? To buy a car is not that difficult. To maintain it is, is, is a challenge, it's difficult. Likewise, to fast the months of Ramadan, it wasn't a big deal. It's not the months of Ramadan soon will finish and we are going to miss it. But to maintain the months of Ramadan is a lifetime challenge. What do you mean, Sheikh, by maintaining Ramadan? Aha. The Almighty God on the judgment day is going to hold you responsible as has held me already responsible. Let me explain the meaning of an ayah in Surah Al-An'am. God says that those who told you that if you do good, you will be rewarded tenfold in lieu of that, they didn't tell you the, the, the truth. I never promise anyone that you do good and I will reward you tenfold. And those who told you that if you do evil, I will recompense and punish you equal, they didn't tell you the full story. So what is this? Isn't this that the Quran says, Man bil hasana ashra saliha? The Almighty God says, no, you didn't understand the ayah properly. You had to listen to Sheikh Masroor so that he explains it to you properly. I'm just making it... Uh, the meaning of the ayah, it needs a little bit of detour. We need to go back to school, attend the grammar school, grammar class, and then come back here so that we understand the ayah accurately. See, in Arabic, there are two, in Arabic, in every language, in many languages that I know of, in few, these languages that I know, we have two types of verbs, transitive and intransitive. Apologies for sounding technical. I make it with examples very easy. A mother who is taking her son to school, sometimes the son is making his way to school and she says that he went to school. We are using the verb go in the past tense. He went to school or he is going to school. Sometimes the mother gives the son a lift and she is driving him to school. Therefore, she doesn't say that my son goes to school. She says, I take him to school. What's the difference between going and taking someone? We say going is intransitive verb and taking is transitive verb. All right. Here in our example, the Almighty God doesn't say whoever does good, I reward him tenfold. The Almighty God says, Man ja'a bil hasana. Ja'a it means like bringing it. It means you did in the year 2020 good action of fasting during the months of Ramadan. God bless you. In the year 2020, you spent a good vigil during the nights of the months of Ramadan and you did mashallah well during the nights of God. Good on you. But the story is not finished here. So far as you maintain the spirituality that inshallah you have gained during the months of Ramadan, you maintain it all the way to the end of your life. Inshallah in 100 years to come, God knows when, more or less, that you expire and you die and you take it with you in the hereafter, then there will be tenfold reward for you. Likewise, the negative side of it is like this. Or answers, God says, don't think that anyone does any evil, I will punish them. No, those who do evil, but they don't erase it by seeking forgiveness. They don't erase it by doing good instead to compensate for that and maintain that evil all the way to the end of their life. Then in the hereafter, there will be tap on, there will be a punishment. All right. Therefore, conclusion, it, that's what I'm saying, that maintenance is more important. Don't be too content that Alhamdulillah, by the grace of God, I fasted this year. By the grace of God, I fasted last year as well. By the grace of God, I did good in, in the months of Ramadan. Whatever that I did, I was charitable. Brothers, sisters, your concern should be how can I maintain it so that shaitan doesn't snatch it from me, so that I don't lose it. 
I give you a tip from Imam uh, Kazim alayhi salam. Imam Kazim alayhi salam says that, that it's very easy. If you don't want to lose it, you forget about it. Any good deed that you do, do it for the goodness sake, do it for the sake of God and forget about it. Like for example, by the grace of God, you gave a charity during the month of Ramadan. And Alhamdulillah, I can I, I, I testify that many members of the community, they were very charitable in this month of Ramadan. May God bless you and, and bless your wealth. But any charity that you gave, forget about it. You know why? Because the more we remember it, the more we often, God forbid, we want to boost. We boast about boasting and we want to like showing off, I'm it. I've done that and and the more we talk about it the more we lose it because it shows less sincerity if you did it for goodness sake why are you talking about it everywhere you see it so the, the how to maintain a good deed do it for goodness sake when I say goodness sake it's for the sake of God because God is good do it for the sake of God and forget about it then you have maintained it on the contrary, an evil that I had done, always I should bring it to my attention to, make, to repeatedly seeking God's forgiveness for it to make sure that I've erased it and erased it and replaced it with good deeds. At the time of Jahili, a pre-Islamic era, there was a lady a little bit slow mentally, not very intelligent. She used to go to the, bar, to the market. When the shops opened, she used to sit at the corner of uh, the bazaar. In the old days, and still there are some ladies that are doing it, but it's not very common. Uh, they were knitting the, the shirts and the scarves with two needles. You know how they were knitting it? So she used to grab uh, the, her thread, goes to the market, sits at the corner, pretends like it seems like she's uh, knitting a shirt or a scarf or something to sell. By the time that the shops are closing, she starts pulling it all out and undo all what she had uh, spun during the day. They refer to her as a foolish woman. They said, oh, look at this foolish woman. And she was doing this every day. The Almighty God in Surah An-Nahl chapter 16 uses that example that Arabs were very familiar with as a proverb and says, "Audhu billahi min shaitan rajim وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَلَّتِي نَقَضَدْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَاسَا You were laughing at her that how foolish she is. Make sure that nobody laughs at you and say how foolish you are. How? Make sure that you are also, you are not undoing what you have spun, what you have been knitting during the months of Ramadan. All the good rewards that you have been uh, like. Uh, reaping all the rewards of fasting and praying at night and everything make sure that by the time that either faith hits you don't go back to normal life make sure that you have progressed spiritually at least one step forward a typical example there are people unfortunately slacking when it comes to the morning prayer especially summertime now we are entering uh, winter it makes it a little bit easier though the challenge of cold weather is still there now make sure that but during the months of Ramadan mashallah the number of people who pray on time for fast time is amazing because of the suhoor see how, how God is pulling pulling us into the becoming better person so make sure that after the months of Ramadan I don't go back to my old habit of missing my morning prayer as you could do it during the months of Ramadan, maintain it, continue the good deeds. As during the months of Ramadan, you were, mashallah, very generous and charitable, maintain it. Maintain the good deed after the months of Ramadan as well. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, I have one less than one minute to conclude. Brothers and sisters, let us pray to God that the months of Ramadan is very significant. But more significant than meeting the months of Ramadan is the maintenance of the months of Ramadan. Maintenance of all the spiritualities that inshallah we have gained by the grace of God during the months of Ramadan. And rest assured that inshallah by the time that Eid hits, next Monday inshallah we are going to celebrate the Eid. I quote the, the holy words of God in a hadith of Qudsi that the Almighty God says, Ya Ibad Allah, qad ghufir 
all those who devoted yourself during these holy months of Ramadan, you were my guest. I am not going to be hospitable to you with less than forgiving your sins and your past. You know, when I was learning computer, one of the commands that I learned was that if you want to refresh a page, hold shift and press F5. Sometimes in life we need to hold shift and press F5 to refresh. Okay? Eid al -Fed is a good opportunity to hold shift and press F5 in my life. Refresh, start afresh, start anew. Because by the time that you inshallah finish your months of Ramadan, the Almighty God says, angels tap on your shoulder, your past by the grace of God is forgiven. Okay, because God was, is so hospitable and forgave your past and gave, make you look as if you are born again. Fresh, like a baby born from the womb of the mother, no sin whatsoever. Start afresh. God says, let us see now how would you start afresh. Are you learning from your past mistakes? so that you don't repeat it or it's just Ramadan was just a ritual routine get it done and back to normal life may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our Eid inshallah on Monday a real Eid of return to God and may the Almighty God accept all our efforts all our amal all what we have done by His grace inshallah reserve it for us as the provision of taqwa wa kullu amin wa antum ba alf khair in advance inshallah jazakumullah khairan sallu ala muhammad wa ala muhammad